The equation is accurate to point zero zero one two two percent. And so just by looking at the very, very small, I can extrapolate all of the mass of the protons and the gravitational force that makes everything work. And now that we have the scale of the hologram, I can tell you how many universe like ours there is in a larger one. And how many of those larger universe there is in a larger one. And again and again and again to infinity. And you are the center of one of those universes. And so you contain all the information of all these universes in the billions of atoms that you're made. And it is a relationship between what you tell the holographic universe and what the universe tells you that makes up your reality. That relationship does not only include you. You're not the only one making up your reality. Because if we all made our reality independently, we would never meet. <laughs> but we are all feeding information to a common reality, to a common holographic structure, which can coordinate all the information to make this amazing miracle that we live in. Now, there is technologies, and I've seen them, that can produce a feedback between entropy and neg entropy. These technology will change your world and they will change your understanding of your relationship to them. And they are very, very soon becoming available. This is something that is predicted by many, many ancient knowledge. There is no way a society can evolve without moving through this step. It is a fundamental moment of transition and it can be a difficult one. Like any birth, you have to go through the birth canal. We are in the birth canal and every one of you can make a very fundamental difference because you are feeding information to the holographic group. And so we need your help. So thank you for helping. <laughs> I know that there's moments that can feel discouraging. I feel discouraged commonly. But I assure you that things are moving very rapidly now. There is a movement pushing us to this next level. However, there is a race against time because our environment is suffering. And so we need to make this transition soon. And we will, with your help. Um, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to correct this. This is 10 to the 35. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the mass of the proton is incorrect. It's uh, 10 uh, um, power minus 27. Yeah, it's 10. By, yeah. by the way. I forget to add, multiply by 10 to the minus 24, right? 1.67, 1.67.
If, if you give us all the technique and the power and anything, mm -hmm. and if mankind is not applying it wisely, mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be a nightmare. It's, it's gonna be more destruction than anybody could ever think of, you know? Mm. So. Um, not really. I'll tell you why. When the tool is in everybody's home and you're not connected to a nuclear power plant, and when you drive your car, you don't pollute. And countries don't have reason to fight for energy anymore. The world you live in has matured. And, and so many of the stressors that are present today that produces war and a concept that there's not enough, go away. Energy is not the only thing that is limited as of today. It's also resources like particular metal, alloy stuff, and, and wood and water and all the other stuff. All the natural resources are limited. So how, how does the technique help to? Yeah. That's a good question. It's a good statement. However, when you have infinite energy, you have all sorts of resources that you didn't have before. For instance, you can pump water in deserts and grow forests. You can control gravity if you have enough power. And all of a sudden, you're not stuck to the surface anymore. And there's a lot of resources in the universe. We are having to get out of the nest and learn to fly. Yep. The lady asked about um, the pineal gland and the expansion of consciousness and asked if that is combined um, with your theory and if you can explain that. And I'm working with a geneticist that is brilliant, Dr. William Brown, and um, we are starting to describe all the structure of the feedbacks of the pineal gland and the brain. But most importantly, the feedback between the heart and the brain. Um, and this holographic information network that you are pulling constantly information from and feeding information back which the major component of the communication is the water molecule. Your brain is 90% water. Yet, scientists concentrate on the 10%. You can remove large portion of the brain, the gray matter of the brain, and work perfectly normally. But if you remove the water, gone, right? The same for the DNA structure. The DNA strand is packed with water molecule all around it. And if you remove the water, the DNA falls apart. But we concentrate very much on the DNA, not on the water. So it's critical that you drink appropriate water. Because your cells absorb water one molecule at a time through a tiny tube in the membrane of the cell. If that molecule is not of the right geometry, your cell will not let it in. So you might be drinking a lot, but your cells are still dehydrated. Unfortunately, most of the water structure on our planet has been destroyed through pollutants, radiation, and um, inappropriate mechanical structures such as pipe. So be careful of the water you drink. Otherwise the pineal gland will calcify. And the communication with the holographic field Okay, diminish. Cool. So new technologies are emerging now to restructure the water. 
So um, there is very exciting things occurring in that field that is going to help us. As well, the technologies that I was telling you about that produce energy typically create high level of structure in water around it. Where the standard technology destructure water. I think she asked if, um, if we are raising uh, um, our frequency and feeding the vacuum with poly positive things and stuff. Yeah. If that has an effect on all people who doesn't oh, care yes. about all that. Oh yes, it has an effect on everybody. And it becomes easier for everybody to have this new understanding. You said that it was able to control space-time, right? Yes. And, um, I mean, the time, changing the time, is it then, could it be understood like that, that somebody was able to move forth and back on the timeline? Um, what is time, is the question. No memory, kind of no time. So, memory equal time. So, if there is time in the universe, there is memory. That means that space-time should be called space memory. <laughs> This is why doctors cannot find the center of memory. Because it's like opening a radio set to look for the announcer. It's not in the box. Space memory is an imprint along the path of an object like the Earth as it follows the Sun. Every second is different from the other because we are in different space memory every second. And as you pass along, you imprint the structure of space-time. This is your memory. And when you make technologies like this, you are um, able to create an, a new memory line. Strong enough to access any memory in the universe. This, this in the ancient time was called the Akashic Record. So from this you can access any memory time and when you do you move in space and that is the key to space travel thank you so much for your attention thank you so much for having me i look forward to the next time we can all be together and until then may the vacuum be with you thank you